So now let's look at how to utilize the shape inside of Toon Boom Harmony. So the shape is located right over here on the left side where uh, you can see that there's a rectangular box. If I were to click and hold it just like this, you can see there's rectangular tool, ellipse tool, line tool, and even polyline tool just like that. So we're going to take a look at polyline tool on the next lesson. Right now, we're going to start with our rectangle tool right here. So if I were to click and drag, you can see that I can make a shape. And if I want to make a perfect square, I can hold shift and click, uh, click and drag it. And you can see that it's a perfect square. Over here, there's ellipse. So just like this, you can actually make an ellipse or hold shift to actually make a perfect circle. There's a line, so you can draw out the line wherever you want or hold shift to draw a straight line from side or, uh, from, uh, uh, or vertically just like this. So let me just select all of this and delete this and let's see the options that shapes provide to us. So I'm going to use rectangular as an option for this. So you can select the size of the shape you want and then click and drag it and you see the size of the shape is there. Besides this, you can see that the start and end is here, but in my case, there's no start and end here. So over here is the joint. Right now you can see that the joint over here is round because I've selected a round joint. But if I were to go over here and go to meter and click and drag, you can see that the joints are sharp now. If I were to change this out into bevel, now you can see that the joints are beveled just like that. So over here, let's work around with the start and end as well. So for that, I need to work around with the line. So if I were to click and drag it, here you can see that there's a line. So I can go for a flat line, a flat start and uh, a round end, or I can have a flat, st flat start and an end start just like this. So I'm just going to leave everything into round for now. So I'm just going to delete uh, all of this again and let's work around with the rectangle tool again. So you can also go to different presets right over here, as you can see. So the, these are just different sizes of the uh, thickness of the rectangle. So you can actually go over here and click and drag it. And there you go. That's the preset of the rectangle, as you can see right there. So there's charcoal and everything right over here. You can also go over here inside the pencil properties and just like you would work with pencil properties. So if you are not familiar with pencil properties yet, then you may want to uh, go and view the pencil properties tutorial first. And then over here, that's the maximum size, minimum size. You can select the texture you want and click and drag it. And the pencil properties are exactly applied onto all of the shapes right here. So you go over here onto the ellipse, you can see that uh, the same Thing is applied over here as well. So let me just go on and go to the default pencil right here and I'm going to delete all of this right now. So let's see the other option that is available with rectangular tool. If I were to scroll down, so just go over here, here you can see that there are other options over here. So if I were to click and drag, you can see right now it is like this. But over here, there is draw behind. So if I were to actually uh, select my uh, red color right here, now it is drawing behind. So this is just like what you would find on a pencil tool. If you were to go over here, then it actually fills it up with the color of your choice. So you can go to something like green. You can see that it is filled up with green. The other one over here is snap to contour. So what it does is as I turn this off, nothing happens. But as I turn this on, you see a blue little circle over here. So what it does is it actually snaps to the existing shapes and you can use them as um, my, as a reference point right over here. So right here in the corner, it snaps. So I can actually draw out right exactly from the corner. So it helps to draw things out directly from the corner, just like this for reference. Another thing over here is snap and align. So what that does is if I were to drag it, you can see that it actually aligns it. It actually snaps to the bottom layer right over here. And if I were to go over here, it snaps to this line. I, if I were to drag it over here, it snaps to this line, just like this. So it snaps to the existing model, just like that. This over here is draw a perfect square, just like this. It works around with the ellipse as well. So once I actually click this, it draws out a perfect ellipse. So I can turn this on and turn this off. So over here, uh, you can see that there is snap to grid as well. So let me just uh, delete this. And now I'm going to enable the grid. So I'm going to go to view. I'm going to go to grid right over here. And here, what I can do is I can show grid as well. So I'm going to go for square grid and I'm going to show the grid. So you have the grid right over here. So if I were to go over here um, and select the circle, 
green is the color that I'm selecting. And if I were to turn on this one right here, that is snap to grid, what happens is that as I draw, it uses the grid as the reference point right here and it snaps to the grid. So you can actually go over here or select something like a rectangular shape and then you can actually draw from this grid and you can see that it uh, yeah, that it helps you to make uh, uh, to snap everything to grid. So if you if you were to draw something again right over here, just like this, you can make a perfectly exact level of square just like this by using the snap to grid option just like this to create equal spaces and have similar drawing. So this is more of uh, like a graphic designing thing rather than an animation thing. So that is how you can use the shape tools. And in further lesson, we're going to take a look at how to work with polyline.